Hello and welcome to our first episode of High Revs News. This week is of course the Geneva Motor Show. I'm Alex and I'm Mr. High Revs and this is my show. So let's get to it. First of all, loads of cars were presented during this year's Geneva Motor Show and we are going to put focus on the most important cars, in my opinion. The shiny diamonds of the show. Look at the shiny shiny! <laughs> So, kicking off with the reasonably priced car, the Bugatti Veyron La Finale. This 450th last Veyron La Finale is based on the Vitesse and it's the only one with the crimson red carbon fiber finish. It's best box specification red and black on the outside and beige and red on the inside. I wonder how they managed to sell 449th Veyron who wants to buy a regular Veyron when the next one is the ultimate final edition Veyron? I don't know how Bugatti did it, but what I would do, I would offer the pre-last version in a package together with the La Finale edition. That way, the new owner would be able to tuck away the La Finale edition in an air-conditioned garage, fab to it each night, while driving the regular Veyron occasionally. Am I too harsh for Bugatti here? I don't think so. Picture this. Bugatti managed to sell 450 cars within 10 years, while Ferrari sold almost 500 LaFerraris within a month since the public annon announcement that the car exists. How bold you have to be to build a car, call it the La Finale, bring it to Geneva and be proud about it. Ego level over 9000. Next is of course the Koenigsegg Ria Gira. It has 1500 horsepower, 2000 newton meters of torque and it has no gearbox. But let me elaborate on this one. It has 5 liter V8 which sends its power directly through 2.85 ratio gear to the wheels. Below around 50 km per hour it will run on electric power only. Above that V8 will kick in up to 8250 rpm redline at which you will be traveling at 410 km per hour. Everything in between will be combined power of combustion engine and three electric motors, which will function as a torque, torque fillers to replace the Ria Gira's lack of gearbox. The numbers on this car are outrageous. Imagine from 150 km per hour to 250 km per hour in just 3.2 seconds. And that's because of the sleep limit. Sleep limit due to aerodynamic drag pushing the car back. Get your head around this, that's mental. Next up is the McLaren P1 GTR. Track only engineering marvel from McLaren. Don't get too excited though, it's not meant for us mere mortals to even see this car with our own very eyes. That's why we are moving on to something slightly cheaper. Lamborghini Aventador, super veloce. Molto, molto, raffreddamento e downforce, bellissima. Yes, LP750-4 SV is all about additional cooling vents, lots of downforce, 750 horsepower of sexiness. What's here not to like? It's a perfect car recipe. All you do is you take a regular Aventador and make it more Aventadorish. Coming up next, Ford has decided to show their concept of new Ford GT to Europeans after its debut at Nias early this year. It has looks to kill, it's modern, futuristic and hypercarish. It's not a hybrid, which is good. And it's powered by the V6 EcoBoost. EcoBoost. EcoBoost, 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 EcoBoost. But what is the icon of American motoring? Isn't it a V8? Where's the V8? Ford, where's the V8? Where's the V8? Where's the V8? <laughs> On top of that, rumor has it that it will cost $400,000. That's Aventador money. Picture this. V6 EcoBoost, 6.5 liter V12. What would you choose? 
And you see, we all would be wrong because I would take the Lambo. And as well as me and people watching this very video, the odds are we won't be cross shopping for La Ford and an Aventador anytime in this decade. But few very wealthy individuals, that's another story. You see, they want to appeal to global trends, show their environmentalist image and embrace new technologies as a result. Low emissions, efficiency and all that Greenpeace bullshit. Not my cup of tea, but then again, not a choice meant for me to make. Next up, Ferrari 488 GTB. You might be wondering about new name of this car. You remember 360 Modena with 3.6 liter V8, then F430 with 4.3 liter V8. Next comes the 458 Italia with 4.5 liter V8. Now here we have 488 Gran Turismo Berlinetta, but the engine displacement is only 3.9 liter V8. So something is not right. Well, yeah, they changed its naming scheme and car gets its name not after engine displacement, but after cubic capacity of each of its cylinders. Pretty clever way to name a car while keeping higher number than its predecessor. It's turbocharged, which is not for the first time in V8 mid-engined Ferrari. Back in the day, having turbo batch was something to be proud of. Today, not so much, it's a sign of succumbing to emission regulations, which hurts Ferrari's pride. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's a great car, active aero rear diffuser and all that wizardry. Actually, Ferrari brand awareness is so huge that even if they would make bread toasters or washing machines, people would still buy it. Slap a limited edition badge on it, put a ridiculous price tag and watch a marketing paradox doing its job. Next is Porsche 911 GT3 RS and GT4 Cayman. To save the manuals, go to the nearest Porsche dealership and place order for GT4 Cayman right now. It instantly became my favorite car in Porsche's product portfolio. Basically it's mid-engine architecture with lots of 911 GT3 bits and bobs and manual gearbox. The ultimate driver focus Porsche money can buy. Next is 911 GT3 RS with its 493 horsepower, 4 liter flat 6, 480 Nm of torque track beast. The RS is 25 horsepower stronger, 10 kilos lighter and 50,000 euros premium over the regular GT3 and comes with a partial roll cage. It even has a Porsche sticker on the bonnet instead of the real badge, which only shows the effort they take to make it as lightweight as possible. Porsche is brilliant at selling you less for more and as much as I would like to hate on this car, I can't. It's a brilliant car and the fact that it comes with a PDK gearbox it's even better because for us real mortals this car is just too damn fast. What can I say? Shut up and take my money? Well yeah, in that case, one GT4 Cayman please. Next is the Mark II Audi R8 V10 and V10 Plus. At first glance I did not quite like the new R8 Mark II, but after seeing it on videos from Geneva it started to grow on me rapidly. Audi offers two versions to start with and more configurations are waiting down the line. I just love the fact that it keeps the glorious V10, less so the new generation gauges cluster from TT Mark III. I personally like the analog gauges. V10 Plus with its 610 horsepower closes the gap on the new Lamborghini Huracan, which is quite surprising. Did I see someone said Audi R8 is not a supercar? I think I'm seeing things. Stupid things. Next up is the Honda Civic Type R. It's vulgar and mean, which will provoke premature ejaculation for all that are in the market for a super hot hatch. It has 306 horsepower, manual transmission, front wheel drive and 2 liter turbocharged 4 post engine with 7k rpm redline. 
Civic Type R prototype achieved a time of 7 minutes 50 seconds on the Nordschleife. That's 7 seconds faster than Megan RS Trophy and only 10 seconds slower than a GT4 Cayman. In racing that translates to a huge difference. But bear in mind, these times were set by professional racing drivers. In the real world, where amateurs do track days, be prepared to be overtaken by a Civic Type R with a better driver than yourself in a Porsche Cayman GT4. That's even more impressive if you take into account that for the price of the GT4 you can probably buy two Civic Type Rs and for the rest money buy booze and cigarettes and enjoy life a bit. Hey man, this is YouTube, please watch your tone, kids might be watching this. I need to have a glass of water. So let me tell you about other important news. Mr. Hires tends to drift away to the clouds and all he talks about are supercars that no one can afford. Let me tell you something about cars for normal people instead. I shall elaborate a bit on brand new Skoda Fabia. What do you think you are doing? Go check if you are not cleaning the bathroom at the moment. Chop, 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 chop. What a jerk. Okay, yeah. shall we go on? So the next step is Ford Focus RS and Audi RS3. In case of Ford Focus RS, the final power output is not yet revealed, but we know it will oscillate around 320 horsepower from its 2.3 liter EcoBoost 4 pod engine. It also for the first time has a four wheel drive and a drift button, which will make it more drifty. And we like more drifty, don't we? For those that last for great sounding five cylinder engine, there is an Audi RS3, which is a more luxurious brand awareness and better quality interior, and also a higher price tag. Whatever you wish to choose, you can't choose wrong on this one, because super hot hatch market is really strong this year. Do you intend to tell people about cars that are actually important? What do you mean? Tell them about new BMW at least. BMW. Let's see. BMW, BMW, I like BMW, they have great sports cars. Let's see what they have. What? Pretty much, yeah. This must be all wrong. BMW. The biggest star and BMW stand at Geneva Motor Show is a front wheel drive seven seater family van family van I must lie down I hope you liked this first episode of High Refs News. If you enjoyed it, please do show your support by either subscribing to our channel or leave, leaving a comment or like or hate on this video. Please also do check our Instagram and Facebook page. Thanks for watching, stay safe, be awesome and hold your refs high.